Hi, I'm Colin and welcome to How to Paint Watercolours. So if you're ready, we'll get started and we'll paint this one. Hello and welcome back to my channel, How to Paint Watercolours with me, Colin. I've chosen a seascape and this will be an evening seascape. This is £90 watercolour paper from Windsor & Newton. So like I said, I've stretched my paper, that means I wet it both sides and I'm just removing any excess water from around the sides to minimise any runbacks. I'm doing it with a big flat brush but you can do it with a, a big round brush or any brush that you can just get the point under the edge of the paper like that. This will stop your paper from sucking moisture from off the back of the page. Straight in, this is Cad Yellow Deep. I'm just going to bring it round this rock. I'm applying the paint stronger because it will mix with the water already on the paper and this will diffuse it and it will actually dry an awful lot lighter. You must remember this when you come to paint. Just dry off where the sea is along the edge here. Just using a kitchen towel. This is called red orange. And I'm just bringing it around, becoming yellow deep. And just around the top of that, this is permanent magenta. And I think you can see that I've actually run some masking fluid around the areas that I actually want to keep clean. I'm just reserving some of the highlights. Cadmium red light. There is a rock down there, but I'm just going to paint over it. Indigo and Prussian blue. I've got the board laying flat. Bring it into the magenta. Take the magenta into the blue. Remember, it will dry lighter. So then at this point, we just start to strengthen everything up a little bit. As I'm remembering my own advice, it will dry lighter. Pull the orange and the yellow into the red. Some of the red orange, pull that into the magenta. Strengthening up the cad red light along the bottom. It's reasonably dark around the rocks. And I've masked out some lines in the sky because I'm actually I'm going to put some, we're going to put some clouds into this and they will act as the highlights and you'll see later on what we'll do with that. Indigo Prussian blue with a touch of magenta and a tiny bit of burnt umber. This is bright red and permanent magenta. Just makes things a little deeper here. And now we're going to have to leave this until the shine disappears off the paper, then we'll come back and we'll put the clouds in. So we're going to allow this to dry for about 10 minutes. Okay, that took a bit longer than 10 minutes, that was about 30 minutes. We're going to put the clouds in now. This is a mixture of indigo, Prussian blue, magenta with a touch of burnt umber. It's a right mouthful. And where you've put the, where you've masked out the bottoms of these clouds, we're just going to tap some colour in. Just darkening some up. Just take a damp brush and just soften off some edges. Okay, and just before we leave that to dry, we'll just re-wet the sea area with a broad flat brush. It just keeps your paper stretched whilst your sky is drying out. And as your sky dries out, what we'll be doing, we will clip it all the way around with some bulldog clips, taking any excess off the top. And now we're going to leave that to dry. And taking some clean water, and I'm just going to run this along where the sea is. Then into that, some of the cadmium yellow deep, just along the top there. Then into some of the red orange. Trying to get a little darker on this side, I think. Into the bright red. Bright red and permanent magenta. The board is set at an angle, so it will run a little bit. And then we're going to leave this to dry. Okay, now that that's dry, I've just got some of your sky mixture, which is the indigo 
uh, Prussian blue and burnt umber with a touch of magenta. And I'm taking a flat brush and we're just going to put some movement into the sea. This is quite well watered down. Just putting a few ripples on the water. About there, we take some more of the sky colour and strengthen the one that we've been using. And then I'm going to move to a bigger flat brush as the ripples get bigger as they come closer to you. They will also get darker. Just adding some water around these rocks here and I'm just going to throw some colour in. Same on this one. This is just some of the orange. Bright red and magenta. Some on here as well. This is just the underwash. There will be a darker colour going on top of this. I just want to take some of the wave colour and also which is your cloud colour. I'm going to paint this rock in. Just drop in a little bit more colour in the water. I'll do the same to this rock. Do it a little bit at a time. We won't get lost. Some of the orange, a little bit of the yellow. Some of the red, a bit lower down maybe. Down to the water line. Drop in some of the orange in. Sure, we have enough colour on it. Dropping some of the red in. Then at this point, I also want to drop some of the sky mixture in. And I'm not going to really play with this because I don't want it to turn green too much when it hits the orange. And put some variation in, that's all. Also helps to tie all your colours together. Just taking a damp brush and just removing some paint off this back rock just where you think the light would hit it and then we're going to leave that to dry okay everything's dry you might notice actually that everything in this painting is a bit bright so now we're going to subdue all this now that it's all completely dry so with a large flat brush and some clean water and brush it from right to left so that when it goes into the clouds which is the darkest part of the painting should anything be lifted or moved it will actually be moved on to the next cloud rather than being brought into the clear space if that makes any sense just keeps your colors just a little bit clean we're now going to glaze on some alizarin crimson and this will subdue everything so if you can see that this is some illeris and crimson mixed with a lot of water. This will get your heart pounding. Okay. And I think I might even just darken that up a little bit. I need the sea to be just a little bit darker than that. all this to completely dry out okay now that that glaze is dry I still feel that the, um, the sea needs to come down another tone maybe two so just a, a slightly stronger mix of the Elysian Crimson once again just glaze over it once again just to take it down a bit more and as we come to the front quite a possibility that I may have to do it again maybe adding some French ultramarine to it we'll have to see how it looks this is a very light touch and I think I might just add just a touch of ultramarine to that one at the bottom so I'm just taking some out of the pot here and I'm just going to add just a touch of ultramarine French ultramarine that is just to darken it slightly taking that on my brush I just want to come behind this rock so now we have to leave this to dry 
Okay, the glaze is dry, um, but I just want to glaze it one more time in the sky. I just want to send it back a bit, but I don't want to send the, the center bit back, but you still have to wet the whole of the sky. Big flat brush. Once again, this is a slightly stronger version of the alizarin crimson. And I'm just going to bring it just into there for the moment. I'm not bringing it all the way into the sky. Touch more here. Very gentle with your strokes. And along the top line, alizarin crimson and French ultramarine. Just along the top here. Just work that in. Very gentle. And we're going to leave this to dry for a second or two. Then we're just going to add some more clouds just along this bottom line. As you can see, the shine is just <clears throat> disappearing off the paper slightly at the top. And I'm just going to restate some of these clouds that we put in earlier with Indigo Prussian Blue, Burnt Umber and Magenta. You don't want too much on the brush. thin wispy ones here. I'm going to put a stroke or two clouds across here. Just some along the bottom. Don't want this to be too strong so I'm taking most of the paint off the brush. Just checking the strength. With a damp brush I'm just going to soften off the bottom edges of these. And I think that's all we're going to do to that. <clears throat> and now we're going to let this completely dry. Okay, that's relatively dry now, and I'm just going to take the mixture again of uh, Elysian Crimson, just for another glaze over the sea. So I want this to be just slightly darker than it is. Just using a mop brush once again. And I'm not wetting the sea this time, I, I want it to be stronger because I don't want to have to come in and do it again. Up to about there, and then with the mixture of uh, Elysian Crimson and French Ultramarine, we're going to bring the darker part of the ocean just up to meet the other glaze. Keep it going into the alizarin crimson. And then we're going to allow that to dry. Okay, everything's dry enough to carry on. I think the sea's gone down far enough. It's uh, <clears throat> nice and dark for me. What I'm doing now, I'm just taking some of the cloud color and I'm just weakening it slightly. And I'm just going to cover this whole rock in it. We will be lifting some paint out. And the reason why I'm lifting it and not scraping it is I want this to be sort of soft and subtler than the scraping method gives you. So this is Indigo Burnt Umber Prussian Blue with some magenta. Couple of little rocks in the sea. Then into that just some French Ultramarine and Burnt Umber. Taking a damp brush and just lifting a, a tiny edge out here, you'll hardly notice it. But just allowing the other undercoat to show through. And I'm just going to begin lifting some off this edge as well, just where you think the light would catch it. And I do want the underwash to show through. And now you can see the reason why I put all those different colours on the underwash as it starts to come to light in the brush every now and again. Okay, I kind of like that. You can sort of put these in as well. Just a little stronger. Once again, some indigo, push and blue and burn umber. Just lifting the little paint out, but not too much because I've got some mashed stuff here where I want to put the highlights on. But I just want a bit of movement on these rocks. And I think that will do for that. Moving into this rock. Same colour once again, get plenty in. Once again, some of the dark, just drop it in. Indigo Prussian Blue, burnt umber. And just for a little change, I'm just going to drop a little bit of orange in. Come around to the foreground rock. That's your Indigo Prussian Blue and magenta, just put in with a touch of burnt umber. Now some of the dark, which is just the Indigo, Prussian Blue and Burnt Umber. 
once again just want to drop in some of the orange this is a colour called red orange you can use cadmium orange if you wish to just like the way you can give that cracked effect into your washes and we're just going to give this a couple of minutes just to start to dry off and we'll just put one or two um, lift out one or two areas but not too much so we're just going to give this about five minutes now that this side has dried out a little bit we can just lift a bit of paint out of this just gives it a little bit of extra interest and I don't want to take too much out maybe there's a bit of backlight coming off a, a wave over here somewhere this could be a little bit too too wet for to this side but we'll just try it's just enough to move the paint take some paint away and leave the orange I kind of like the way it's gone that okay I don't want to do any more to that um, and then we'll put the rest of the rocks in once this is completely dried okay the pitch is dry now uh, and the reason why I've uh, left it let it dry in parts is because I want the dark parts of these rocks to dry so when I put the bottom section of these rocks in they won't run into each other and we'll end up with a, a, a crisper edge <clears throat> so once again it's the same mixture of the uh, indigo Prussian blue a touch of burnt umber and some magenta and I want the tops of these to be slightly lighter just want to lift some paint out they will contrast against the dark of the other part of the rock going darker on the bottom once again some of the darker colour Prussian blue, indigo with a touch of burnt umber and then just before it all starts to dry I just want to take the top out where these rocks are very subtle and we come to these same procedure again put the more watery mixture on first it's just, just a, a thicker mixture of that colour and once again just on this front edge where you think the light would hit it we just remove some paint exposing the colour that is underneath just want to pull a little bit out here as well and I also want to add a little bit of shadow or reflection so it's the reflection I'm looking for but I'm leaving a gap between the water and I'm just putting some clean water on I don't want the, the reflections to be too big just adding a mixture of colours in now the indigo, Prussian blue and burnt umber softening out the top edge once more some of the dark you could even if you wanted to just drop a touch of the orange in I just want to strengthen that uh, reflection up so I'm just going to run a little bit more water along it just soften it all and then just drop some of the darker colour along the bottom edge indigo, prussian blue and burnt umber and I think I'm starting to fiddle a little bit now so I'm going to stop and then we have to let all this dry now that everything's dry I've just removed all the masking fluid off the painting most of it I think but it has to be bone dry when you do this this is just some cadmium yellow and this is where we get to put the, the highlights in of orange in there whilst it's still wet when we come to put the highlights on the clouds we're going to have to soften the edges in once they've dried should have added just a bit changing to orange red orange here as we go further back into the sky into this rock here and like I said we'll be softening all this into each other to take away any hard edges back to the yellow just 
just a touch of magenta soften that out to nothing then we have to let all this dry then we'll soften all those edges in okay the highlights are dry and what we're going to do now apart from the sun we're going to leave that as it is we're going to soften the back edges of these into the clouds and it's just a question of moving the paint around and uh, I'll just do a couple because this will take a little bit of time and we're just fudging might be a appropriate word just fudging the lines in we're not taking any paint out we're just blending the edges off just moving some paint softening the edges you see how that edge has disappeared and you're also helping to thin the highlight down to a line as masking fluid can uh, get away from you a bit and put a thicker line on the actually intended and you do that to all the back edges and because, like I said because it will take some time we'll come back when that is done and we'll have a look also including the the ones that are in the sea as well okay you've got your, your edges softened in and we're coming to the end of it now and I think we'll just put a couple of seagulls in if you've enjoyed this video please uh, click the like button and subscribe subscribers are always welcome here and if you'd like to see any other painting videos I've made for YouTube I will leave a link in the description box and if you click on that it will take you straight to them so I now reach the best bit this is where you get to sign it mount it and frame it and once again I'd like to thank you all very much for watching. Thank you.